start. So on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and the City of Independence, welcome to First Friday for the month of August. These months just fly by. It does not seem like it should be August. And um, Before we get started, we always like to thank our business sponsor this morning. Our business sponsor is the one who pays for all the, the great muffins and fruit and hot coffee from where else but Annie Mays. So at this time, would you please welcome our business sponsor for this morning, Country Place Senior Living and their marketing coordinator, Marie Jensen. Good morning. Thank you, Lisa. Um, we're so excited to be joining uh, the community in Independence. We're currently building a Country Place Senior Living. It's an assisted living residence. It's at the intersection of 13th and Mulberry, right across from the Jefferson School. So hopefully you've seen that construction happening. Right now, our expected opening date is November, uh, a little bit later this year. So. Uh, all of you should be looking for your invitation in November to join us for our grand opening event. Um, that's always a lot of fun to welcome everyone into our community and see what we're, what we're bringing here. Um, I mentioned I just want to talk a little quickly about uh, what we're doing. So it's assisted living. Some of our residents are still very independent, um, are going out to play bridge, getting their hair done, participating in their community events as they always have. Um, some of our, our residents will need a little bit higher level of care, um, you know, maybe help transferring from a wheelchair to their bed or to a chair or um, help with their meals. Um, so there's going to be a, a wide range of needs that we'll be able to fulfill at Country Place. Um, we do have a nice history in the state of Kansas. We built our first assisted living community in 2003 in Hoisington, Kansas. Um, and we have been building ever since the community here in um, Independence will be our 13th, lucky number 13. So, um, and then the closest uh, that if you'd like to visit another country place is in Chanute. Um, so uh, thank you again very much for having us. I also do want to introduce our director who will be beginning, be beginning with us on Monday. Her name is Nancy Vestering. She has um, a wonderful history in uh, senior care, um, and uh, we're just really thrilled to have her as uh, leading our team here in Independence. I'm going to let her say a couple of quick words. Thank you, Marie. Um, this is kind of, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who have known my journey, um, it's like coming home. Um, I had no idea this was opening up, but I, I will just kind of tell you a little bit about myself and then how I ended up here, and then I'll uh, sit down. Um, my, like she said, my name is Nancy Vestering. I am, my sister is Janet Demo, Drew Demo. It's my brother-in-law. Um, I've been in long-term care for 24 years. I came into it a little later than a lot of people and I did that because I wanted to make a difference somehow in a very small way being an older person I felt like I might have a different perspective and I did um, I've done nursing homes as well as assisted livings and independent livings um, I uh, lived around the Wichita area the El Dorado area um, and Hutchinson and um, thought that was just real important to me. So came back here, uh, bought a home. Uh, some family things happened, so uh, I had to go back to Wichita for five years. And my house didn't sell. I couldn't figure that out. But now it's all kind of coming together. So I moved back a year ago. I've been working out of town at a nursing home, and I heard that an assisted living was planning to come here. I uh, didn't think I'd have that, that good of chance because I hadn't been around this area for very long, but I did get the position. I am just very excited. I know a lot of people here. I know what I know of this company is it's excellent, and I wouldn't work for anyone else um, that wasn't. So um, I have three children. My daughter's in St. Louis, Missouri. I have two sons in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, and so that's kind of a little bit about me all around about, but I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be part of Independence and the community. So 
So thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. And welcome back to Independence. We're glad to have you. And welcome all you guys who slipped in while we were talking. The pirate football team, or at least part of you all. So welcome to Independence. We're excited for your season. You're going to love Independence. All right, so like what I was saying earlier is that, as you all know, that come every month, but for those of you who are maybe new to First Friday, this is an event that's co-sponsored by the City of Independence and the Chamber of Commerce so that we can all get together in this room and hear from great speakers like all of these individuals to my left and to my right, and also to share lots of good information about what's happening in the community. Um, at your tables, you're going to see a program. If you flip them over, you're going to see a calendar chucked full of events um, that are happening in the community. And I also want to share with you that we have all this information on our website. You can go to Get Independence, which is our Facebook page, see tons more information. And um, we always have a lot of flyers over on the flyer table that you can take with you when you go back to work. The Independence Daily Reporter publishes What's Up every Friday. They'll be publishing this calendar as well, so you can always check that out. And then also we do some live radio spots every Friday afternoon, and also we do a community calendar that is um, on the radio four times a day, Monday through Friday, on three different stations. So there's absolutely no excuse for not knowing what's going on in the community. Um, let's go through a few things that are on the, um, the calendar. So I just want to remind everybody that Little House on the Prairie is still open, so get in your prairie fix before September, and then the prairie will close down, and so you still have time to get out for that. Um, there's an event that will take place tonight that has already happened the last two nights during the week, and it's Independence Runs Back to School. So I encourage um, you to listen up as I explain this a little bit. So we had an event that was um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and it's run back to school for all high school student athletes as kind of a celebration to get ready for school, to celebrate the kickoff of fall sports. And they did a two-mile fun run through um, Riverside Park on Tuesday and Wednesday. And tonight is our last night um, of our fun run. And so we're kind of opening it up to community members, maybe middle school kids, just to get a lot more um, participation out there. And even next year, and we might make all three nights even a community fun run. So, and Jason, I sent you an email. I invited all of you guys, if you'll let you come, to um, run with us this evening. So um, it'll be fun. It's much more fun to run in the park than it is out on that practice field. I'm just telling you. So, so you're all, I invited you, if your coach will let you come. Um, so um, that's tonight. Um, at 6.30 at the stadium. So also tomorrow's recycling. What's cool about recycling tomorrow is the Masonic Lodge are going to be um, uh, sponsoring recycling. So if you want to check out um, Jeff Shaw, Dr. Scott Knoll, Andrew Demo, they will all be out there very willing to unload all of your recyclables tomorrow morning. So um, the VFW Post 1186, I don't typically promote garage sales, but these individuals do, the VFW does a lot for our community and our veterans. So they're having a garage sale tomorrow. So I say that so that you can go buy all of their trash and turn it into your treasures and support the VFW. Um, speaking of supporting people, one of the things that we all know about independence and that you'll all learn from being here for maybe a year or a couple of years is that we're a very caring community and we take care of our own. And we have a little boy named um, Colton Huff who is um, uh, fighting leukemia right now and he's a 10-year-old boy that goes to the independent school system. And there's a flyer over on the table and you can read all about um, the event that is happening this weekend. It's a poker run, it's a benefit auction and you're gonna hear some more after we're all done, maybe a, a one minute shout out about that. Um, so be sure and check out that and, um, and contribute to the cause. Um, senior movie days are back in swing so you can check out the dates for those on the 8th. And there's still one more opportunity to get free sports physicals on the 10th from St. John. Um, Another um, event that's coming up August the 12th is the Blake Birdie Triathlon. And all the money that they raise at the Blake Birdie Triathlon in honor of Blake Birdie 
is um, for childhood cancer. You know, she passed away of neuroblastoma, I think, when she was six. And so the family uses all that money that stays in our community to help kids like Colton Huff um, that are struggling with uh, the um, fight against cancer as well. So, And I read on Facebook this morning, 10 to 4, I think, at Dr. Beaver's. Is that right? 10 to 4, you, there's some girls that are having a bake sale there. So go support them because that money will be going to the Blake Birdie Foundation. Um, let's see here. Kansas Aviation just called me, and they're going to be having an event on the 17th. It's their 25th anniversary, and so they're opening up the plant, and you can go out there and take community tours and check out that facility, so mark that on your calendar. On the 18th, you want to um, mark down All Wheels Night. You know that All Wheels Night um, has been going on for a long time, but now they've added the Indy Cruise piece to it. And it's um, all of the people with the classic cars and the souped up cars are bringing them downtown. And so they're not only having all wheels night, but at eight o'clock, all of those cars pull out and they drive down Penn Avenue through the park and, and um, through the oval back down Penn Avenue and out on West Main. So you'll want to check that out. And it's also kids night that night. So be sure and bring down um, the kids for that. And that will be their final night. So you don't want to miss that. Um, IHS will be having their can opener on the 25th. That is their scrimmage that they always have. The football team at ICC will be having their first opening game on the 26th. So be sure and go out to Schulte Stadium and cheer them on. Um, you can go to the game, and then you need a slip down for um, uh, movie night. We had probably over 600 people at our last movie night, and this one will probably be no exception because it's Finding Dory, which is a huge movie. Um, and everybody loves that one, but um, we had great success at last at our last movie night. In fact, some of the football players were down doing a haka performance, and that was a, a hit. We had we were showing Moana and and the Polynesian theme, so it went um, very well. And that's um, on the 26th. So mark your calendar for that. There's tons more on here. Get ready for the Can Oakla 100 Mile Highway Sale on the 8th, 9th, and the 10th. Um, the walk to end Alzheimer's will be on the 23rd, so you can mark that. And if I've missed anything on the um, calendar, be sure and let me know, because we will not publicize this electronically or over um, or to the um, reporter until after today's event. So if we have some corrections, be sure and let me know. So we've got four great speakers this morning. There's still a few muffins over there, hot coffee. You guys might need some coffee. And this is a relaxed event, so you're not going to to um, bother us, anybody, if you want to hop up and go get a bottle of water or um, a cup of coffee or a muffin. So just slide on over there, help yourself. And with that, we're going to introduce our first speaker, um, and who is no stranger to the podium. So would you please welcome our very own David Cowan. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I wanted to take a moment right to start. You know, she talked about it, but if you were downtown this last Saturday at movie night, she said 600. I think there were 750 to 1,000 people. If you saw Rob Morgan's picture shooting back there. But, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what Lisa and Tabitha, Main Street and Chamber do. That Saturday was a huge event for the businesses downtown. And these ladies deserve a round of applause for the work they do in this community. <laughs> As Lisa said, my name is David Cowan. I'm the Public Safety Director for the City of Independence, and one of my duties is uh, ADA. Get everything going here. And we, uh, Lisa contacted Craig and I last after the last First Friday event, and uh, we had a card on the table about ADA and what's happening in the community. So we thought this was a great time to come and speak to you a little bit about ADA and what's happening. As most people know, in uh, April of 2011, uh, the city entered into a settlement agreement with the Department of Justice. Uh, based off of a complaint, uh, the DOJ sent people to the city. They went to all the city buildings. They looked downtown. They were here at Memorial Hall, Riverside Park. Based on that, uh, an agreement was made to do ADA improvements in the city. Uh, December, this past December, we were notified by the DOJ that we had done substantial work and that they were closing the uh, settlement agreement, which, you know, that speaks a lot to you because 
As citizens, you went out and you voted for the sales tax, which a quarter of that does go towards ADA and all the work that the city has done. As the slide kind of shows you there, we've installed more than 1,000 ramps, improved parking spaces, added downtown access aisles. And next Thursday, uh, we will be taking a transition plan, which takes us to the next step past the uh, settlement agreement. Wanted to show you some examples of what we did in the past five years. This is what we call a simple ramp. And what I mean by simple, it's not dealing with a lot of elevation issues. Uh, a ramp like this uh, placed in the city costs between $1,500 and $2,500. This is what we call a switchback. And there's several of them in the community. Uh, most notably, I think the Catholic Church has one on their corner. We have one out here. This one is pictured on North Penn Avenue up by Woods Lumber. A switchback is dealing with uh, elevations, and these are considerably more costly, uh, between ten and $25,000 per ramp when we install one of these. And these are some of the other uh, part of the settlement agreement is we established a complaint process with the city. Uh, we re recently received a complaint about ADA access at our ball fields. Uh, Craig and I quickly reviewed that and with working with our street department, and they did an excellent job. It almost looks like we had a professional company come in and do this at Emerson Field, but put in AD accessible uh, parking at that location. Uh, very proud of Mike and his guys and what they did out there. The lower right corner is an example of the uh, access that we placed in the middle of the blocks downtown. As I said, though, there is still work to do. Uh, we've done a lot. The commission's done a lot. But we are bringing to the commission next week a 10-year plan called the Transition Plan uh, to continue to do ADA work in the community. There's more curb ramps. There's more sidewalk improvements. Downtown sidewalks. That is a project that is estimated at $2 million. And you say, we have new sidewalks downtown. What? Well, all has to do with slopes. And if you remember when we had that presentation way back then, I can't remember the gentleman's name, Roger Brooks, and he talked about the different designs and how we can deal with elevations downtown. And the plan will talk about that, and Sean Turner will present that to the commission as we transition, as these sidewalks need to be replaced. And there will be some decisions that have to be made to deal with the elevation downtown. But that is a $2 million estimate of projects you need to do. We've done a lot of work at our Ralph Mitchell Zoo, but we still have work to do. Uh, about $500,000 to deal with sidewalks in the uh, playground area, down in the ravine. That is still out there to do. We are in the process of putting a plan together to go out and uh, bring to the commission, take it to Craig, and uh, for the 2018 projects. Uh, some interesting things, though, is that we're working with a committee with the police department. Uh, Jerry has formed a transportation committee that is made up of citizens, uh, also has insurance people. There's representatives from fire EMS, PD, street department, bike club, and citizens. They're help giving us recommendations for transportation, corridors, uh, what they did on Oak Street has been very, received very well in the community, uh, and we have a bike club. So those ideas are being brought to us as we develop this plan, and we will be pre presenting it to the commission here in the near future. Funding is, as always, with everything in the world, an issue. Uh, we do have the quarter cent sales tax with a specific ADA part of that. I believe that runs out in 2022, if I am correct. But we will continue to seek additional grant opportunities. If you remember a lot about what's happened in the past, we have received several different grants and uh, cost shares that have helped us do a lot of the improvements that we have done. Uh, also, on this aspect of it, I would encourage you to go to the city's webpage. We do have an ADA section there. 
Uh, you will be able to see the transition plan once the commission approves it. There's also, you can read the settlement agreement, uh, but there's also our complaint access. If you have a concern that you wish the city to look at, you can see there how you can contact us and that we, the process that we will follow to deal with those concerns related to ADA. Moving on, as your public safety director, uh, also deal with fire EMS. So we wanted to take a minute to update you as to the EMS aspects of our health care since our landscape changed dramatically July 4th with the opening of the Labette Independence Health Care Center ER. So that was huge, and it's a big impact on the city. There's a lot of discussion in the community, and Sean and I want to ensure you, your health care is a huge priority in our department. We worked very closely with Becky Mitchell and her staff at the NDER in the weeks prior to the opening. You may have seen the Facebook photos, um, newspaper article that we put out there. And I can tell you the relationship with Becky Mitchell, Dr. Ex Allen, is excellent. And we work often and sometimes daily to ensure the highest level of care to our citizens. This is a graph, or not a graph, but some statistics year to date. Uh, we have ran 1,484 emergency or calls. 1,318 of those are emergencies. 166 are non-emergencies, and we've transported over 730 patients in our ambulances so far this year. Since January to July, our patient transport destinations were Coffeyville Regional Medical Center, 292, Wilson County Medical Center, 205, Jane Phillips, 97, Labette Health and Parsons, 83, and the Independence ER, 51, since opening July 4th. This is a graph of July with the opening of the Independence ER. 51 patients uh, went there, 13 to CRMC, Four to Lebec County directly, uh, nine to Wilson County, nine to JPH, and one to Fredonia. And this is as of August 1st to date. Uh, we've, out of the 10 patients that have been transported, eight went to the NDER, one to Coffeyville Regional Medical Center, and one directly to Lebec Health. Wanted to speak a little bit about that because, as I said, there's a lot of discussion in the community. Independence Fire EMS, under the direction of Dr. Empson, continues our relationship with Jane Phillips, uh, cath lab, and the cardiologist. This was a program we, that was developed back in mid-2000. Uh, they came to us because of the outcome of what we call ST elevation heart attacks. We were having a very poor outcome in the community. Uh, patients were either ending up with what we call cardiomyopathy or severe congestive heart failure and disability. So they came to us with a way to improve that. Back then, the studies were shown if we could get people to the cath lab within 90 minutes, those vessels could be opened up and the damage limited and people could return to a full uh, life as far as no longer having disabilities from congestive heart failure. It's a program that has ran 12 years. It's very closely monitored and watched, and a lot of things have in that process been changed or improved. In 2015, when we faced the closing of our local hospital, uh, you know that brought a lot more stress to the fire EMS and the things, and we improved the program even further, adding telemetry and direct contact with the cardiologist. So what I'm trying to tell you is this is a program that we continue to this day. Uh, ST or STEMI, uh, which is ST elevation myocardial infarction, is not an everyday occurrence. Uh, I think on average it's between 12 and 15 to happen in a year's time. When that happens, uh, our paramedics are trained to identify that. But once they immediately recognize that, uh, we're immediately online with the cardiologist and the funny thing is sometimes this happens on a Saturday and technology is so neat we literally at times speak to them on the golf course <laughs> the telemetry goes right to their phones he sees what we see he identifies yes you have this this is what I want this is what we need 
and the cath team is activated and they're waiting at the doors. I mean, that's the neat part of this. We've seen, you know, HIPAA prevents me from telling you a lot of things, but some of the lives that have been changed and saved because of this. So this is a huge program that we continue today and we continue to work at. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about is, and one of the important aspects of having Labette ER here is stroke care. Uh, our paramedics recently become stroke certified, and uh, you know the key to several types of medical emergencies, STEMI being one, strokes, is time. As time ticks, tissue dies. When tissue dies, you do not get that tissue back. I mean, that's a permanent disability. Strokes is one of those things. So the first thing I have to tell you is if you have stroke symptoms, don't ignore the symptoms. Because uh, time, the clock starts ticking the minute you have those symptoms. And we have a window, a three-hour window, which we can reverse those and get you back to full mobility versus being, uh, you know, worst case, put into a nursing home because of the damage of a stroke. So the key is early recognition, and the other key is scanning. You have to immediately get scanned. And we have worked close with Becky Mitchell and Dr. Allen. You know, if that scanner is tied up, you know, they're going to free it up the minute we tell them we have a stroke alert. We're going to get you scanned and then get the proper treatment started and get you to where you need to go. There's actually five different types of strokes. I'm only going to talk about the two major types. One is hemorrhagic. And that's where a vessel ruptures and you have bleeding in the skull. Uh, often those need to go to a neurosurgeon. Sometimes you need surgery. Sometimes it's something they simply have to watch. Um, those can often be very catastrophic and bad type of situation. The other one and, uh, is the blood clot. This is the one that, you know, early intervention by the scan, once they identify that, we can give you uh, what they call TPA, is a blood thinner, and we can get you then to a stroke center. Why a stroke center? The stroke center is similar to what they developed with STEMIs, where they take the catheters and go up into the heart and open up vessels. The stroke centers have these abilities to go up into your brain now and get these clots. And... TPA doesn't always dissolve the clots, or sometimes it partially dissolves them and they still have to go up there. But the key is to return blood flow to the tissue before it dies. So they are working in this three-hour time window to try to get that done. So it is critical that all aspects of the healthcare situation work together to get that accomplished. I know of three stroke centers in our area, St. John's in Tulsa, Springfield, Missouri has one, and KU Med Center. So those are some of the key aspects that we are working very closely with Becky and Dr. Allen as far as getting people to the stroke centers. Uh, in closing, uh, I am often stopped here recently and asked, how does ambulance make transport decisions? Uh, in addition to the laws we follow in our protocol, you must realize most of our patients, over 90% of them, are alert and conscious in the back of our ambulances. You know, truly those that are unconscious, critical, unable to make a health care decision is a very, very small a percentage of what we deal with on a day, day basis. Patients make their own health care decisions. When you're in the back of that ambulance, you will make those decisions. Our paramedics do not make those transport decisions, and we do not make decisions based on insurance or your ability to pay in the ambulance. So I want everybody to please understand that. So you make those decisions. You will be asked by our paramedics where you want your destination to be. Uh, I want you to know that I am, me and Sean are both truly impressed and have the utmost respect and confidence in our fire EMS team. The things that they have done and been through the last couple of years has been significant. Uh, the, you know, I wish I could tell you some of the stories and some of the lives that have been changed by the decisions they made. Uh, we are happy, very happy to have Labette ER here to be a part of this community and that aspect of health care. Uh, I can tell you we had a critical call last night and the system worked very well there. Uh, the patient was stabilized and then sent on to tertiary care. 
Uh, you should be assured you're in excellent hands, both with our fire EMS people and with the health care that is available in this area. So with that, Lisa, I will turn it back to you. Well, I have to echo that. I think we have four great medical providers in our community, and we're very fortunate for that, but we're definitely in good hands with David Cowan and um, Sean Wallace and Jerry Harrison. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm very pleased and, and uh, feel comforted by um, uh, the knowledge and the expertise that we have in our community. So we're going to switch it up just a little bit. We're going to switch speakers, and um, we're going to switch order just a little bit. Before I introduce our next speaker, I wanted to let you know that when I talked about the run back to school, that's not just something I dreamed up by myself. I usually go out and try to find communities and people that are doing really cool things and then just try to copy that. Um, it's much easier to do that than to come up with um, creative ideas all on your own. So one day I was talking to my sister on the phone and who lives in western Kansas, and she said, I'm going to have to call you back. We're getting ready to go to a run back to school. I'm like, what do you mean a run back to school? So you see where I'm going with this. So when she got home, she tells me all about this run back to school, and this was a couple years ago. So then last year, um, it happened again, and so I told my niece, I said, tell me about this run back to school, because she was participating. And so she kind of broke it down for me, and I'm taking notes and everything, and thinking, I want to do that this fall. That would be so much fun for independents to um, be able to do that. And so um, I scaled it way back, because if anybody knows me, they know I don't just step out there and do crazy things. I'm very controlled, and um, I like to have things organized, and so I started small, and, um, and so anyway, so the run that we had earlier in the week was not just my idea. I borrowed that idea from another community. Also, in 2014, if you went to the annual banquet for the chamber, you played a game called Last Man Standing, and that game has been played at our annual banquet 14, 15, 16, and 17. It's also been played at golf tournaments, St. Andrew benefits, all over the community. I, that was, it was at the chamber banquet that we played that game for the very first time. Again, that was not my idea. Um, my sister is involved with Pheasants Forever, and I was talking to her about what would be some good fundraising ideas. And so she tells me this idea. And again, I'm like, oh, I don't think we could do that. That sounded a little bit more technical than I was able to handle. And so after mulling it over for a couple of years, because she told me this in, in 2012, I was brave enough to step out and to do that at our annual banquet. And it went over um, amazingly. And, um, and like I said, has since been a, a fun game that has played at numerous fundraisers in the community. So I say all that because um, great things happen in a Western community called Liberal Kansas. Not only do great things happen in, in Liberal Kansas, but great people live in Liberal Kansas. My sister and her husband and her two kids and now my daughter. And not only do great people live in Western Kansas, but great people move from Western Kansas and move to the great community of Independence, Kansas. So with that, would you please welcome our new high school principal from Liberal Kansas, Jason McAfee. Wow, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm going to tell a little story based on that fun run, so you guys better listen to this, because that's, that's, the fun runs began in Liberal about 25 years ago. We got a new head football coach out there, and he wanted the football players to be work harder, be better, better in shape than everybody else around. And so he said, come on, guys, get in the truck, and, uh, or Follow the truck, and I mean, we literally just followed that blue and white truck for miles and miles and miles. So you guys might want to think twice, but no, it, it, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it, it's a good tradition. Um, it, it evolved from us just following coach around and listening to him yell us, yell at us with the bullhorn to a true community event. Um, and so I would encourage you guys to participate. It, it really has become a tradition uh, that liberal is very proud of. Um, so thank you for that introduction. My name is Jason McAfee. I'm the new principal at Independence High School. Um, I come from, from Liberal Kansas, as Lisa said. Um, and really what I want to do today is I just want to introduce myself a little bit and tell you about, a little bit about me, uh, about my family, where we're coming from. And uh, I, I think I'll start by saying I'm very impressed uh, with this community so far. We moved here um, about a month ago. And 
I have three little kids. I'll talk about them in a little bit. And, you know, a lot of apprehension there, uh, moving, moving a family across the state. Uh, my kids grew up in Liberal. That's all they knew. They came here, and we unloaded the truck, took them out to the, to the park, and they just fell in love with it. Um, they saw the, the water park, the, the train, the carousel, and all of that uh, apprehension that they had just, just went away. And so it's very evident that you guys have a, a wonderful community here, um, care about uh, community spirit, care about kids. And uh, you guys probably take that for granted here, but please don't. Um, just, just this event and everything listed on the back of that program, um, that it's just refreshing to see that kind of stuff because that, it doesn't happen everywhere. And so you, you guys truly, I remember being that day that I was talking about at the park and just thinking, man, is this real? You know, um, you guys truly do have a great community and I, I've had a great welcome so far. So thank you for that. Um, a little bit about me. As Lisa said, I'm from Liberal, Kansas. For those of you who don't know where Liberal is, it's, it's almost in the same spot that Independence is, just on the western side of the state. Um, we're here in Independence, three counties from Missouri, Liberals three counties from Colorado. Um, and so it's a community of about 20,000 people. Um, the, the major difference is it's, it's probably a little more isolated than here. Um, your county here in Montgomery has about 30,000 people. The size of Liberal Kansas is, is about 20,000, and then the county's not much bigger than that. It's only about 22,000 people. So um, the biggest difference it is, is it is isolated. I grew up out there in, in Liberal Kansas. Um, we spent a little bit of time as a kid in Kansas City, but um, moved out there, pretty much uh, grew up there, graduated from high school from there. Uh, from there, I went on to K-State and I uh, got a, mat or a bachelor's degree in education, and I had the opportunity to start my, my educational career out in Liberal. And so I went back out there, spent some time out there. I was a, a, a teacher. I, I coached. I coached football. I coached track out there, and I kind of really just coached whatever was needed. Um, that was in the, in the late 90s, and I uh, got married. And my wife at the time, uh, she wanted to pursue a, a degree in um, library science. And I, I'm going to say this, and it, it, it sounds funny to say this, but back in those days, um, which was really only about 15 years ago, uh, back in those days, um, you couldn't just turn on the computer and get a degree. Uh, you actually had to go somewhere to, to get a degree. And that was one of those, it, it sounds funny to say, I hear somebody giggling, but it, I mean, that's, that's true. That's how much things have changed in the last 15 years. Um, so we look for a job, or I look for a job somewhere where she could get that degree, and I was able to, to find a position in uh, Columbia, Missouri, actually a little town just north of Columbia named Centralia. I got a job out there uh, coaching football and, and teaching uh, social studies. And so we took that job, and she pursued a degree at the University of Missouri. Um, and three years later, Liberal called back and said, hey, we want both of you back. We got jobs for you. Um, and so we, we went back. And that was a really good move. And when we got back there, I started working on my master's degree uh, to become a, a school administrator. Um, 2008, uh, summer of 08, I, I finished that. And the, the 08, 09 school year was a, a major transition for me. I started that year out as a, as a teacher, as a football coach, as I always did. Uh, Christmas break came, and, and I walked out of the, the classroom and went back in a different building as an assistant principal in the same school district um, at the end of spring break. So I made the transition mid-year from the classroom into basically an assistant principal role. And I was assistant principal at uh, an intermediate school there for the rest of that year and then made the transition to being an as assistant principal and athletic director at one of the two uh, middle schools in Liberal. I did that for about three years, and then I was able to go back to that, to that school that I started as an assistant principal at, and I was the principal there. Um, and following that, I moved to the district office and served as the public relations and, and human resources director for a while. And I really wanted to, really felt like in that role that I was dealing with uh, the adults and, and not kind of took, taken away from the, the kids. I didn't have much of a relationship with kids. And anybody who goes into education... That's what you got to, you got to love that. You got to love that uh, interaction with kids. And, and you take that away and that was missing. And so I said, you know, I really need to get back in a school building. And so I was, became assistant principal. There's an opening, became assistant principal at Liberal High School. And that's the most recent uh, position I've had. 
Uh, just talk a little bit about Liberal High School uh, so you can compare it to, to Independence High School. Liberal is a 5A high school. I think the new classification system that Keisha come up with, we are the Liberal is the largest 5A at this point. There's about 1,300 students and about 100 staff members. And so it's about twice as big um, as Independence. Um, but comparatively speaking, you know, student to teacher ratio, student to ta staff ratio, it's, it's really about the same. Um, kids are kids everywhere. Um, doesn't matter where you go, you could, you could go halfway around the world. Kids are pretty much going to have the same issues that they're dealing with as they do here, right here in Kansas. Um, the one big difference probably between liberal high school and, and independence is liberal, uh, the, the community of liberal has been a majority, minority county for probably 15 years. Um, a lot of Hispanic uh, uh, students, but the, other than, other than um, the ethnic uh, differences, the, the socio-demographics and all that stuff is very, very similar to independence. And so... I come from somewhere that I think I think it, I, I can make a lot of comparisons to and, and bring some strengths to Independence High School. Uh, I understand the, the previous uh, administration they've started some programs at Independence High School, uh, PLCs, AVID. Um, those are things that very familiar with. We've had those programs in Liberal uh, for uh, numerous years. We're actually Liberal High School is an AVID demonstration school. Other schools go to Liberal to do AVID to learn how to do AVID. That's something that I hope. I can bring to Independence High School and strengthen that. I hope I can strengthen the, the PLC uh, process there. The one thing that is different at, at Independence High School that I can tell so far that I don't know much about that I hope to learn more about is what they call link crew. And that's where they link uh, like a freshman with a junior. And so they kind of help develop a, a relationship there to help ease that transition into high school. Um, as far as what I would like to do at, at Independence High School, you know, really this first year, I, I, there's been a lot of change, it sounds like, um, and I really just want to come in and, and ask questions and build relationships with staff, build relationships with the community, and uh, so I invite you guys to, uh, to come to, to Independence. Some of you, a lot of you probably graduated from, from high school there. Um, but I would invite you to come back and, 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 and stop by and see. We can take a tour of the, of the building and we can see how it changed. It's, it's, I'm going to go back to that. It's very evident that you guys are a community that cares because walk into that building, it's the same building, but it has been given a facelift at some point in the past. When I uh, interviewed there, I like, this is a brand new building. Um, but it, it, I've told it's not. Um, but your, your elementary schools are new, and that, those are impressive buildings as well. But I'd invite you to come into the high school, um, give you a tour. It would be good for me to give you a tour. That way it helps me to get to know it a little bit better. Um, and, and if you have a question about something, I invite you just to, to pick up the phone and call. Um, it's a really busy time of year for the schools, but I, I guarantee you if you call, I'm going to get back with you within 24 hours. might be in the evening, uh, but I'll definitely uh, give you a call back. Um, and I'd like to get to know each and every, every one of you. As I, as I look out there, I see some people that I've met already, and, and uh, I'd like to get to know everybody here. Hopefully I can come back and... Uh, do a little bit more, maybe talk about AVID a little bit more in depth, maybe talk about PLCs a little bit more in depth another time. Um, I really just wanted to introduce myself to you guys this time, and I invite you to, to come by Independence High School, um, come out to the games, and, and, and support the Bulldogs. So, thank you. Well, Jason, my kids are grown, so I have nothing um, to gain by saying this, but my, by my little sister and my niece, who um, had you as a vice principal, said that they hated, absolutely hated, to lose you. So, Rusty, wherever you are, good hire, and um, welcome to Independence. All right, so we're ready to move on, and if you see Jason slip out, he has another appointment he has to go to, so, um, but we're going to move on to our third speaker. She's no stranger to many of us in the room. She serves on the Chamber Board of Directors. She's been on the Leadership Board of Directors since 2004. Would you please welcome Jody Hayes. Good morning. Ah, yes. Success already. I might just call it good right there. You know, the calendar says it's August, which means back to school time. I'm here to talk about an, an enrollment of a little bit different variety, and that is enrollment in leadership independence. Uh, we're getting ready to kick off our season again, and uh, wanted to take just a few minutes 
uh, to talk a little bit about the program, um, maybe why you should consider either participating in it if you haven't already or supporting someone else to do so, and how you might go about that. So um, in 2003, I was a, a pretty new employee, and my, in, my boss gave me the opportunity to uh, go through leadership independence, and I have been involved with the program ever since. It's one of the best things I think independence has going for it. And as I look around the room today and I see, um, you know what, just throw up your hands. If you are a leadership independence alumna or a board member, past or present, raise your hands. Look at that. That's so awesome. You don't have to look very far beyond this room either to see the impact of leadership independence, whether it's on community boards, um, city boards, organizations. It's, it's really got a lasting impact and footprint in our community, and I'm just so pleased to talk to you a little bit about it this morning. Um, there's a couple of quotes we, we put up on the slides here, and I want to address those briefly. Uh, the first is a quote from John F. Kennedy. Uh, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. Um, that is a, while that hasn't been necessarily a formal part of our program, I will tell you that um, that is so entwined, intertwined in what's happening in leadership independence today. It's a great combination of community overview um, to give students the opportunity to really learn about our community, learn some leadership skills in the process, and also learn about each other. Leadership is action, not position. This is probably the other fundamental truth of the Leadership Independence Program. You don't have to have a title to lead. Anybody can lead anywhere at any time with the gifts and graces that they already have. And our, our goal in Leadership Independence is to kind of help maybe awaken that, that thought for people. The program itself consists of nine sessions from September to April. Um, we connect students with various activities in our town. They learn real-world application of leadership skills, kind of on the backdrop of this wonderful community and the benefits and, and, uh, and good things that happen here. We try and give them a kind of a behind-the-scenes peek at small business, at bigger business here in Independence, in healthcare and also in education. And we give them a chance to put some of those leadership skills to work. And recently, we've begun incorporating a joint session with Leadership Coffeeville, and that has been a wonderful, I think, change in the program um, to really see those connections form, to literally hear people in the room go, wow, we're not really that different after all. We're 18 miles down the road. <laughs> but it really is a thing, and it gives this kind of safe environment for some of those conversations to occur. So what do we know about small towns? Well, I think more than ever, those of us in small towns understand that networking and collaboration is imperative. Without that, um, a lot of work doesn't get done. In bigger cities, you've got a bigger economy of scale, and it maybe becomes less necessary to work together. But in, in towns our size and smaller, being able to work together um, in meaningful, helpful ways is so important. So in addition to the leadership skills and in addition to the community tours, one of the biggest advantages of leadership independence is bringing people together nine months, one right after the other, uh, to really learn and, and really network with some folks that maybe they wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to get to know before. Um, so we really get the opportunity to um, get people excited about serving and, and leading in our community. I wanted to take just a quick look at numbers. So Leadership Independence got started in 1984. Uh, 1996 to 97 was the first year that a class project was completed by a Leadership Independence class. Uh, that one in particular we'll talk about in just a minute, but it's still alive and well today. 400 is the approximate number of graduates of leadership independence in those 30 plus years. So 400 folks who have gone through the doors, who have uh, developed a new and deeper appreciation of their community and uh, learned some leadership skills along the way. Of those 400, 150 have actually had more of the formal leadership training component that we kicked off in about 2002, 2003. 
18 plus, and that's where we'll spend some time talking this morning, that's the number of projects completed here in Independence for the benefit of the citizens of Independence by Leadership Independence graduates. So it's a little busy. I'll walk you through it. In the top left-hand corner, you see that uh, I. That is for FIRST Leadership. That was the program uh, developed as a class project of class of 96, 97. That is a pro it's a leadership program that happens in the course of, of the high school year for sophomores. Uh, they, uh, they come in and work four of their off days from class and learn leadership skills and learn about what makes independence such a great place to live and work. Uh, let's see, and I'm just going to kind of go through there. Uh, Dr. Seuss, in 2004-2005, one of the Leadership Independence Projects was a, was a birthday bash for Dr. Seuss, and it was held at the Ash Youth Center. It targeted, of course, kids and the love of reading and carried on several years after that got started. In 2005 and 2006, the Independent Skate Park received a grand reopening thanks to the Leadership Independence class that year. They raised money, they improved, the, they, they improved the opportunities that were there at the skate park and also gave folks a reason to come down. Uh, in 2003 and 2004, the Live Fund was established, uh, carried on several years after that, and that was a fund um, that was made available to teachers throughout the district to just use when a student had a need that there wasn't another funding resource for. So it might have been a pair of shoes, might have been a pair of glasses, might have been a backpack, you know, whatever that student needed that was keeping them from being successful, those funds were available uh, for use. Um, tear off city maps of independence down there in the right-hand corner. Uh, I think 2001, 2002, that class put those together, and those are still used today. Um, at, I think we give them out at the chamber. Okay. Um, one I didn't know about till I started putting this together today. Down in the bottom, you see that uh, I pledged to buy local. The class of 2001-2001 or 2000, 2001 helped with the Main Street fundraiser that year. That was, I think, pretty early in the fundraiser days, and, and uh, they helped pull that event off. Um, and we've done several things with Big Brothers Big Sisters throughout the years. Uh, in 2002-2003, they hosted a, the class hosted a, a day out at Elk City Lake for unmatched uh, littles and took them hiking, took them kind of through that park, and so not only spent the day in a meaningful way with those kids, but also connected them with that wonderful resource that is Elk City State Park. Uh, in 2007 and 2008, uh, they also hosted a bowl for kids' sake and, and raised some money for Big Brothers Big Sisters in that way. You might be noticing a theme, with which is benefit projects that specifically benefit kids has really been a, a focus of the, the classes over the years. Another look at some more projects, 2011 and 12, uh, the class did a couple of different fundraisers to raise money for the, the Backpacks for Foods program. So those backpacks continue to go home with kids who um, are food insecure, and that was, that was a, a great one that's kind of ongoing. Uh, in 2009-2010, the class raised some money for Riverside Park and Zoo. 2010 to 2011, that was a garage sale and fundraiser for Ash Youth Center Scholarships. We know that recreation is so important for kids, um, but if scholarships to participate in those sports programs are a barrier, we wanted to remove those, and so the class raised money and, and put it towards that use. 2013 and 14. Uh, that was the, um, that's the walk the park. If you've, if you've spent some time out at Riverside Park the last couple of years, you might have noticed these signs that kind of look like street signs, and they mark, um, they mark mileage. Um, the class had a walking trail marked, and, and I think there's three different ones depending on maybe your fitness level or your time level. So if you haven't done that, it's a great way to interact with your park. You can walk one of the three different paths out there and, and track your miles and know how far you're getting. Um, they also, that class also, they were kind of overachievers, they also did some, they did a, 
an event in conjunction with uh, park opening day where they reached out with kids and helped them learn about healthy snacks. Uh, 2012 and 2013, the class project took a little bit different turn. It wasn't necessarily an activity or an event, but, but that group did the research uh, to figure out what it was going to look like to bring recycling to independence. Our recycling efforts today, I believe, were immensely helped by that class's program and project and just getting that conversation going about what this might look like. And then the bottom right-hand corner, Wolfstock, that's the Independence Dog Park. If you've been on social media or read the paper, you've probably seen some things uh, with this very cool new dog park. And, and the Leadership Independence class joined with um, our turn and made that, kind of pushed that over the hump and made that happen and did a grand opening. Um, so you can see there is a tremendous variety of of projects and benefits to the community that have happened just as a side benefit of the Leadership Independence Program. Um, so it, it has given, those projects have not only given to independence, but they've given the classes an opportunity to kind of think about it in a lab environment where they've kind of gotten to, to try out those new leadership skills and those new collaboration skills um, and really get a lovely benefit for all of us out of it in, at, in the end. There's one class project that's not up there yet. It is last year's class project, and I believe they'll be doing an unveiling of that within the next, I don't know, 60 days maybe. So in summary, I think this is kind of the magic formula of leadership independence. It's students excited to learn more about independence and develop leadership skills. Uh, combined with really generous members of the community who are willing to give their time, talents, and resources to promote the program, interact with the classes, and share their insights. And it really equals an opportunity unlike any other in our area. So applications are being accepted. I looked. They're over there on the table. Um, they're being accepted through August the 11th. Tuition is $300. There are scholarships absolutely available. So if if cost is a, is a barrier, um, there's an opportunity to get around that as well. And um, we would love to have you consider participating in leadership independence this year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Our last speaker is uh, all ready to go. I know you guys are, are dying to hear the coach talk about you all. Um, and for all the rest of us in the room, I want to remind you that last month we had a CP2 speaker. Um, Rebecca Pites was talking about the Community Pirate Partnership, the CP2 program, where all of us as community members can be matched up with all of them as student athletes and bring them into our homes, match ourselves up with a couple of players from any sport, um, girls, boys, and, um, and show them some independence, hospitality, and also just to um, welcome them into our homes so that they have a nice place to hang out and some family away from their own family. So we're hoping all of you guys that are out-of-state athletes will be matched up and be a part of the CP2 program, and you'll find that um, uh, fun and, um, and welcoming as you spend your time in your community. So with that, I'm going to welcome your coach and our coach, Jason Brown. Can everybody hear me without the mic? I might move around. Listen, this is something our guys know, but I want you guys all to put your hands up, and you're going to clap when I say one, two, three. You're going to all clap twice until we all get it together, all right? One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. That's how we get your attention. All right, look. I'm going to say, I'm going to say independence, and you guys are going to say gotta love it, all right? And the louder I get, the louder you get, all right? Independent. Gotta, gotta love it. it. Independent. Gotta love it. Independent. Gotta love it. Good. That's how we say. We say football, and we say gotta love it. So we're in independence, and we're the football team. So real quick, I'm gonna introduce you guys. Uh, my couple of coaches on our offense. So you know, we left the staff meeting at about one this morning, and then uh, we had breakfast at seven. Jason, and, uh, I'm gonna. We're taping this, so I got you. use that. We had breakfast at seven, and then. Uh, and, you know, our defense is in a meeting right now. These guys got to go back and get taped. We have practice at 10, 15 this morning. So, uh, this working? Yeah. Uh, so, 
I brought the offensive staff, defensive staffs in meetings, and I, I canceled the offensive meeting, um, and so because all the offensive coaches are here. So, Coach Harris is right here uh, in the blue shirt, um, California native, and is the offensive line coach. Um, coach Belcoos right here is is from is actually from France. Um, he's here. He's coaching assistant offensive line and uh, and tight ends. Uh, Coach Latson is right here, uh, coaching our wide receivers. Coach Diaz is right behind them, coaches our quarterbacks. Um, Coach Parsons is right there. He assists with the wide receivers. Who am I missing? Is that the coaches? Coach Ornalis, who's doing our, my PowerPoint right here, um, coaches our running backs, does all, a lot of our academic stuff and recruiting. Um, we'll go in the front here. This is Delrick Abrams. Stand up, oh, Delrick. This is Delrick Abrams, plays cornerback for us, um, DB. Um, this right here is Dorian Williams, um, plays corner also. This is Malik Henry, uh, plays quarterback. Uh, thank you. Um, this is Keenan Walker. He's an Arizona transfer uh, from Phoenix, plays offensive line. Calvin Jackson right here with the, the hairdo, uh, <laughs> plays receiver. This is Isaiah Edwards, uh, plays offensive line. Allen Edwards, Jermaine, sit down. Allen Edwards back there, he plays quarterback. Jermaine Johnson, the other hair. Uh, plays defensive end. This is Tamarian Johnson, uh, plays defensive end. So those are some of the guys that I chose to bring. They're doing real well in, in, in uh, camp right now. So we're in boot camp, basically, is what it is. We got, this is our third day of helmets was last night at the stadium. Today we'll put on our shoulder pads and we'll be in our first day of shells. We'll have shorts on and pads and helmets. So um, this, we'll get a little contact in today, first time. So these guys are all eager because we're all in the dorms and there's no school and, you know, testosterone's flowing and all that stuff. So this right here is our motto. We, we say win and what's important now. Um, the reason I'm here speaking to you guys because we, we win in the community first and foremost. I hope our guys, if, if they see you at Walmart and they see trash, they'll help pick it up or they'll help you push your cart in for you. But we teach, the, we, we preach this right here. That's our acronym. I'm an acronym guy. What's important now is, is what we do. And it starts in the classroom, obviously. They got, they got, these guys are having it harder than when I, had, when I went to college. They got to have a 2.5 to graduate from junior college. I only had to have a 2.0. So there's a difference uh, in the rule changes over the years. Um, and so we went in the tutoring labs, we went in the weight room, we went in the classroom, and then obviously on Saturdays, winning will take care of itself if we win all week. So that's why we say win and what's important now. This year, this was on the back of our shirts when I took the job here last year. Now, on the back of our shirts, it, is, it says expect to win. So there's a difference in 18 months, and that's what we, uh, we're holding our guys uh, to a uh, higher standard. Okay, go ahead, Coach. Or the mic, do I have the thing? <laughs> Technology, man. You know how to do it? <laughs> All right. I don't know how to do that stuff. These are, I'm going to introduce some coaches real quick. Um, Coach Harris, you saw. Wrote running backs, these are just our guys. Uh, we just took some pictures the other day for our, uh, and coaches down here on the bottom just got here. So um, we'll get that up. That's on our website now. So we just got an updated website. So those are our guys you can meet. Coach Latu brought the Polynesians down to um, the showing last week in and did a good job. And then he also had it at the golf tournament. Okay, go, go ahead, Coach. Um, this is our pirate mission statement that I've created when we got here. To build young men of character, demonstrate class and humility, to craft an atmosphere of hard work, effort, and discipline that permeates throughout our program, school, and community. Core values to accept the idea that we deserve to be champions. Create a tradition, respect our traditions, create an environment, respect our environment. Make positive life choices, one in which we can all be part of and contribute to. That's kind of what we've created um, when we got the position here, and, and uh, we're kind of living by that. Go ahead. This is, a, I'm an acronym guy, so this is what I've created at, uh, to me what a pirate uh, symbolizes. And so we're always going to be positive, interested, relentless, attacking, tenacious, and engaged. So that goes, starts in the classroom and then it just goes on. Because we're all going to have some bumps in the road here, so you know. Uh, you know, we're all here, and no offense to Independence or anything, but nobody in here turned down Notre Dame to come to Independence. And I mean that by the players. These are all Division I transfers. They've all been highly, uh, you know, had a high, you know, high, really, really high regarded out of high school. Um, and they've chose to come here. They believed in, in what we're doing. They've come here, and then they're going to transfer out uh, rather quickly. So um, we make sure that they're always going to be positive because, they, you know, some people come. They came from, Malik came from Florida State. So he's here in Independence. And now he's probably looking around like, dang, where, where am I at? 
So we got to make sure he's positive. You know what I'm saying? So those are the things. But these guys have adapted and they accepted independence and they love it. All right, go ahead. We will create an atmosphere that is conducive to winning. Be our brother's keeper. Do right. Win in the classroom first and foremost. Be on time to everything just as we are expected to be on time in the real world. Okay, go ahead, Paige. We will be great community members, respect women at all times, respect our living quarters and each other's, earn a 2.5, and have a team GPA of 275. Expect to win this year is a new thing. Finish what we start, regardless of the outcome. Goals and objectives, you always see win for me is always capitalized. Win each and every day, win one game at a time, uh, represent each other and create our own legacy. Win the Jayhawk Conference, earn a bowl bid, best scoring offense, best scoring defense, have the best special teams. These are our awards that we give out to our players every week. And you can read these ones. Pirate Award is kind of a guy that uh, exemplifies just being a great guy. He may not even be a great player. He just, uh, he's, a, he's a team guy. He does great in the community. He does great in the classroom. Captain Award is one of our better players that also leads everybody and gets them going in the right direction. POW stands for Players of the Week. And then uh, you'll see this right here. It says Scholar Baller. That's the highest GPA award. And then the bottom one is all the players care about. So this is what the coaches argue about on Sundays after games is this award right here because this is the best position group. And usually that position coach has to buy these guys some type of food. So, um, so if it was the, the O-line that week, Coach Harris has to buy offensive line something, and they won the award. But then the defensive line coach is, is arguing on Sunday about, nah, we had a better game, and then it comes down to me. So, um, okay, go ahead. And then, at the end of the day, this is actually Coach O's quote, every day we have a different coach speak it to the kids so they can learn how to speak in front of big audiences and stuff. And, you know, we got like 160 guys right now in practice. So, um, do right, do your best, treat others as you want to be treated. And that was Coach O's uh, deal last night. And after practice, we addressed them. But uh, this is kind of what we, we live by, and we want to make sure these guys act like and do right. And so, um, that's kind of, in a nutshell, being quick and... and uh, so I'm not too long-winded, but um, that's kind of what we are at Indy now. And hopefully that, you know, these guys have met you guys. You guys have seen them in, in town, and, and, uh, and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll address you. And I tell them, please and thank you go a long way. And, you know, um, you know we had more Division I coaches that practice in the spring than, than probably in the history of the school. And, and uh, you know, we have about 32 kids right now with, with four-year offers. And, um, you know, it's only going to increase. So... Hopefully you guys will be there August 26th. We play Iowa Western here at home. Um, you know, I don't think Independence has beat Iowa Western since they joined the Alliance. Um, so, you know, that's an important game to start off with. And uh, now Mayweather fights that night. So it's a West Coast fight. So you can still hit our game and still watch the fight. We'll be done quick. So, uh, so I'm just letting you know. Make sure you understand that. It probably won't be long anyway. So any questions? I do. See how this guy, oh. <laughs> so, you know, uh, our, we got a jersey. We got three jerseys. We grade our kids every day. And that's why we're here till 1 in the morning on certain nights in camp. But we grade our kids. We give them a plus grade. And then they wear a T-shirt or a jersey. It's actually black. On the back it says, I'm the captain of the ship. Since we're, we're pirates, we got a ship theme. If they get a zero grade, meaning they didn't make us better or worse, um, they just kind of even kill on the back of the shirt. It says treading water. And then uh, if they get a minus grade, um, they can be a minus for anything. We grade the whole day. We don't just grade one drill. So we grade the whole day. They could have an A and the, they could have a plus in the weight room, but then go to sleep in class. They're probably not going to get a black. They're going to uh, probably be in pink. So um, a pink jersey on the back of it, it says, I let my shipmates down. And so... Those are, that's the theme. They don't want to be in pink, I'm just telling you. Division ones come out here and they ask them, why are you in pink, man? And uh, they're like, uh, you know. So it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's a kind of a self-starter. I don't really have to do much. Get, we issue the shirt, they get. And so, um, you know, a couple of these guys have been in pink, but they're doing a good job right now. So, um, and by the way, if you get a pink, you have to. I have a Super Bowl winning trophy with a slot on my desk, and they have to come put a dollar in there for breast cancer awareness. So that's kind of what we do with that. So it makes it positive at the end of the day. But they don't want to be in pink long. 
They got to get two pluses to get out of a pink. So they have to get two uh, plus grades to get out of that, that pink. So, um, so they're learning. We're, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, we're building it, and it's a little by little, step by step. But Rome wasn't built in a day, they say, but I, you know, I'm kind of an impatient guy. So we're trying to get this thing uh, built quick. And we've done great things. And if you haven't seen our new weight room, um, you know, we've redone a new weight room. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting ceremony for uh, Judy Harris, and she came out, and then uh, we've got it wrapped inside. It looks great. And then we, we also did our, weight, our locker room the same way. And so, um, so it's real nice. So you guys come out and feel free to come out to practice anytime. We're, on the, we're at the school today. We just got the fields painted yesterday, Coach O. And coaches, we have to line and paint our own field, so you know. So if anybody has a service that paints fields, please come on out. <laughs> and I do appreciate you guys for allowing our kids in your homes uh, that you have done, uh, that they will get to come and have extra food. You know, they eat three times a day. Uh, Carl does a great job with those guys, but, you know, at the end of the day, we work, we work them hard and long, and, and they're always hungry at the end. So midnight snacks are welcome. So uh, any questions? Anything else? Thank you, guys. So who's Malik? Who's Malik? Kansas is way better than Florida. <laughs> and those pink jerseys, I was out at your practice. You know, we had run back to school, so after the run was over, I'd go into the stadium, and I was watching you guys practice. And I, I don't know who, but yeah, there were some pink jerseys out there, but I thought they were cool, so um, it, it impressed me, but I guess not anymore, so. Um, okay, so um, anyway, so we always, so we are, we're getting ready to wrap it up, but, um, but before we do, we do some one-minute announcements. We let everybody come up and, and give a little shout-out from the microphone, so if you're wanting to do a one-minute announcement, why don't you come on over here, and we'll get the... Um, Microphone ready for you if there's somebody that wants to um, to say anything extra on the calendar of events and um, While Tabitha is coming up here. I just truly I want to say this because you guys um, I hope you realize this once and this goes to the coaches too. once you spend some time in independence I hope that coach Brown lets you off campus long enough to go to more than just Walmart um, but um, Independence is a wonderful community, and whether you're going to be here for a semester, you're going to be here for two years, whatever your time is in Independence, I hope you get out into the community and, and participate in, in some of the activities. I hope that we all as community members come out and support you as you um, uh, win all of your football games, even against Iowa Wesley, and um, uh, we welcome you to the community, and we hope that you enjoy your stay here, however long it might be. So welcome to Independence, guys. Yes. <laughs> and I heard your coach say you like to pick up trash, so um, when you're downtown, stop by Main Street, and Gary and I will hook you up with some, some fun activities. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit. Um, Main Street is teaming up with Astra, and we are doing an art, uh, art walk pub crawl on September 9th. Um, the 200 block of Penn is going to have some artists displayed throughout the late afternoon and evening. They'll be doing some live demonstrations and showing off their artwork, and then I don't have to explain the other to you. But anyway, we wanted to save that date, September 9th. I think the time is probably 4 to 11, somewhere in that time frame, and we're just now getting the work done on that. So we do want you to save the date on that it's going to be a great activity. Our theme is called Paint the Town, and... Um, I guess that's about all I'm going to say about that right now, but be watching our Facebook pages for more announcements on that. Thank you. Thank you. April, come on over here so we can get you on the camera. And if you have a band or know of a band that would like to participate that day, we're looking for bands to provide entertainment downtown. I would like to encourage everybody to mark your calendar. I know it's a big weekend, Labor Day weekend, but that Saturday, September 2nd at 10 o'clock, we are going to be honoring one of the most incredible people in this community who has given so much back to independence. And we're going to have a ribbon cutting on the newly developed park, Robert Wesley Park. So please put that on your calendar, September 2nd, 10 o'clock. We're going to have a ribbon cutting down there to see this incredible new park. So thank you. I want to... Uh, advertise for the Mid-Continent Band one more time. 
Our final concert of the season will be this next Tuesday. We're also hopefully doing a little pre-concert pre, uh, thing with uh, Mary Poppins. We have an arrangement of that. So you might come out and listen to our musical that's going to be this year. Uh, I do want to congratulate Coach. Uh, some of his athletes mm -hmm. have been out to the park listening to our concerts uh, as a part of their classwork uh, and uh, in their music of Prish classes. And we appreciate you guys coming out and the athletes doing that. So thank you. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock at the park. Thank you. I'd just like to take a quick second to uh, thank everybody in the community. And speaking of community, what a great day to talk about community. That's all we've heard today is community. But um, I'm working with Colton Huff. Uh, Lisa mentioned him, the little boy in Elk City who's fighting leukemia. We are having the fundraiser tomorrow, um, 9 o'clock, right over in the AutoZone parking lot. If you don't have anything else to do, which there's a lot of activities, tons of activities tomorrow, but we'd like to see you all come out and support him uh, tomorrow, starting at 9 o'clock with a poker run. And dinner will be right in here tomorrow night at 5. Uh, auction, live auction. And uh, again, I want to thank all the community members who have been very gracious with your donations. So much appreciate that. If you would like to make a donation, whether it be a pie, a cake, cash, just come out tomorrow night, tomorrow morning, support Colton. We do appreciate everybody in the community support very much. Very appreciative of that. Thank, Thank you. you. I know you're all dying to get an update on Dairy Queen, so here's Brent Littleton. I take it everybody's missing Dairy Queen, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard it was so bad that a blonde walked into the library the other day and said, hey, I need a five-buck lunch, make it a deluxe cheeseburger and a hot foot sundae. And the librarian said, I beg your pardon? She said, yeah, I need a five-buck lunch, deluxe cheeseburger, and a hot foot sundae. And the lady looks at her and she goes, ma'am, don't, don't you realize this is a library? And the blonde goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. She goes, I need a five-buck lunch. I a hot foot sundae. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I hope I didn't offend nobody with that one. <laughs> Nevertheless, the accident happened on the 26th of May, and it takes about 90 days for the insurance to settle. And so we're at day 80, so, but we're on track to be settled up kind of next week with them. And then after that, um, February the 1st, we're looking at reopening. It's a total loss. We're going to gut the store. We're going <clears> to <throat> redo what we have there. But it's going to be a lot bigger, a lot better, and um, we're looking forward to getting open. So Yay. if that will help everybody, and they can quit asking me in Walmart when I need a gallon of milk, and it takes me two hours to get out of that damn place. <laughs> All right, you heard it here. Anybody else? Yes, Hank? Quick question for Coach Strong. Who does he fear with the offense or the defense, gentlemen? Offensive <laughs> <laughs> guy, but defense wins championship. <laughs> but it takes them all, right? Them all. That's right. All right, everybody, have a great weekend, and we will see you next month. And thanks again to Country Place Senior Living. <laughs>